is Pope Francis the Antichrist. Church, the Pope, whether it be this current Pope Francis or a successor, which I doubt, by the way, is the Antichrist. Apart from the Bible clearly pointing to the fact that the head of the Roman Catholic Church is the Antichrist, the Pope himself proves that he is the man of sin. The great theologian from last century, J.A. Wiley, said, and I quote, The same proof that proves that Christ is the Messiah, without doubt, proves that the Pope is the Antichrist. You see, when you, when you, when you grab scripture and study it, and study it, and really study, you come up with the fact that there is only one person that it keeps leading to as Antichrist again and again, the Roman Pope. He is the perfect candidate. He has all the qualifications and church, he meets all the requirements. You see, the Pope seeks what the Antichrist seeks, world domination and world rulership. It's what he's always wanted. It's what the Antichrist has always wanted. They've always craved world rulership. That's why the Pope is calling for a new world order right now. This current Pope is crawling, is, is calling for a, for a new world order. It's simple because he wants and will get, for a time, rulership over the world. For a time he'll have rulership over the world. That's very clear in the Bible. That's why he's inviting Muslims, why he's inviting Jews, why he's inviting Christians and Sikhs and Taoists and, and Hindus to join him. It's, and they are. They're joining him now. It's so that he can be ruler over them in Mother Church. He doesn't care what your beliefs are or what God you believe in. That, that's the least of his worry. All he's concerned about is world rulership in the Vatican under the headship of him. That's why all, all world leaders and the likes of Kenneth Copeland, Rick Joyner, Benny Hinn, Joel Osteen and the head of the Southern Baptist Convention and many, many others have all joined hands with the rest of the slipper kisses and bowed the knee to him. You see, the Pope doesn't care what you believe as long as he has your submission. You see, Christians have always known the Pope is the Antichrist. They've always known that up until the last hundred years. Their doctrine of faith used to declare, they used to declare that the Antichrist and the Pope was the same person. They would preach it from the pulpits. They would preach it in the schools. They would preach it everywhere. But with the emergence of the, of the, of the demonic NIV Bible and the rest of the false Bibles that all, uh, end, uh, end in, in false teaching, the false Bibles all accept the authorised version, the King James version, the original Bible, bought out, all these Bibles bought out by the Vatican, the NIV, the ASV, the American Standard Version. You see, the King James Bible, the re real Bible, has been put on the shelf. I'd say 95% of Christians today have no idea that the Bible shows that the Pope is the Antichrist. They come up with some wonderful things, some wonderful statements, some wonderful theories about who the Antichrist is. Was it Henry Kissinger? Is it Obama? It's none of them. All roads lead to Rome. The Bible shows very clear that the Pope is the Antichrist. You see, every, and I mean every new version, wherever you go, in these New Age Vatican Bibles, are Vatican ordained. Except for the King James Bible. A Roman Catholic, Catholic bishop by the name of Orif stated that the Roman Popes were, I quote, monsters of guilt. He went on to say that the Pope was the Antichrist. He didn't last very long as, as, a, as a bishop, let me tell you. You see, the Church has always known that the Pope is the Antichrist till a hundred years ago. History shows that for hundreds of years the Bible was banned by the Vatican and the lay person couldn't, wasn't allowed to read it. 
In the 12th century, even the Catholics called the Pope the Antichrist. St. Catherine said, and I quote, Even if we know the Pope was Satan himself, we must still obey him. Really? It was the great Scottish preacher, John Knox, who said this, The Pope is the Antichrist and the son of perdition, of whom Paul speaks. Have you ever wondered why the Pope wears a cross that is upside down? It's a symbol of Antichrist. His staff that he carries around with him is a satanic staff with a serpent's head on it. And on his head he wears this ridiculous hat that is the fish god Dagon. It was Charles Spurgeon, who many, many people will quote, but they don't very often quote this from Charles Spurgeon, that said, No sane man, no sane man should doubt that the Pope is the Antichrist. The Pope, this Pope, has seven names of blasphemy to his office. Seven names that he carries around that blasphemes Jesus. Number one, he is called Holy Father. But let me tell you, there is only one Holy Father, and he doesn't live in Rome. Number two, he is called Blessed Father, another, another de- de- despisable blasphemy. Number three, he's called Pontifus Maximus. The pagan name of deity is from Babylon and their religion. Number four, Monsignor, which means my Lord. Let me tell you, he is not my Monsignor. He is not my Lord. Holy Reverend. Psalm 111 says, God alone is reverent. Number six of the blasphemous names that this this creature takes on, his holiness. Number seven, and possibly the worst of the lot, Vicar of Christ, or translated Christ on earth. Now, if you're a Catholic, and this isn't enough to make you throw away your rosary beads and your holy water, then nothing is. It's all blasphemy, and if you believe the Pope is any of the above things, then you're on the free ride to hell, my friend. It was the great John Wesley that said that the Pope was emphatically the man of sin. And he is the son of perdition, the Antichrist. Oh, the Vatican will never ever show you what really happens on the inside in the Vatican. There are leaked reports from priests who have gotten out of there and turned to Christ. Telling of Satan worship in the Vatican and black masses. But what about this new Pope? Pope Francis. He is the first Jesuit priest to ever be raised to the position of his unholiness. He is the first time ever that a Jesuit priest has ever been raised up, ever. But let me just say that the Jesuits formed in the 15th century always have and always will be the Pope's hitmen. They have sworn an oath to lie, to cheat, to deceive and even murder to protect the Pope. No one is as evil as the Jesuits and this current Pope Francis is a Jesuit priest. They were created by one of the most demonic men of all time, Ignatius of Loyola, to be the Gestapo, the henchman, the SS of the Pope. They were deemed that dangerous and that crafty that prior to Pope Francis, not even the Vatican would raise them up to number one spot. Have you ever wondered why a Jesuit priest at this time, in the end times, has been raised? Because he's the murderer, he's the killer, he is the dark spot of the Vatican. This Pope Francis comes across exactly as the book of Revelation said he would. Not as a deceiver, he is but would win the people with false peace, false kindness and false humility. Pope Francis is the most dangerous man this world has ever seen. He is the one that will sit in the temple and claim to be the Messiah. He is more dangerous than Hitler. He is more dangerous than Gaddafi. He is more dangerous than any man that has ever lived. He's already fooled the world and now has over one billion followers in his clutches. But he won't stop at one billion. And and he's now convincing religions of all faith that the time is now to join him in a universal faith, 
a one world religion. He doesn't care, as I said, what you believe. He doesn't care what you, what you trust in as long as you come under his authority. The great Westminster Confession of Faith, that wonderful, beautiful confession of faith that all Protestants should adhere to. The one all the, the Protestants have always quoted up until recent years stated that the Pope was the Antichrist of which the Apostle Paul preached. But now they've taken that out of the Westminster Confession many, many churches because it might upset a few Catholics. Really? You see, the Reformers, the Puritans, the great men of the, of the Philadelphian Church Age believed, they believed, they preached, they wrote, they confessed that the Pope was the Antichrist. They believed it was a fulfilment of Matthew 24, 5, saying that many will come saying, I am Christ. And over the years, many Antichrists have been around. 266 of them have been Popes. But let me tell you, this final Pope is the Antichrist. Not a Antichrist, the Antichrist. If you look back all the way, 266 Popes long, ever since a Pope, every one of them has claimed to be the Vicar of Christ, or Christ himself. With the rise and fall of the Roman Empire in the 3rd century, which was built upon Babylon, Babylonian occultic worship, it fell big time. But Rome was resurrected under the name of the Roman Catholic Church. You see, Rome never left. The Roman uh, Empire never left. It simply turned into the Catholic Church. And its popes, under its popes, Christians were still killed. Between 65 and 100 million Christians have been killed at the hands of these popes in the last 1800 years. I suggest you read Fox's Book of Martyrs and see just how bloodthirsty, how demonic, how evil this cult really is. You see, the Pope of Rome claims to have the jurisdiction over all Christians, whether you're Methodist, whether you're Assembly of God, wherever you are. That's the claim of the Roman system. If you study and study chapter 17 of Revelation, you cannot possibly not see the church of rome you can deny it you can put it uh, your head in the sand you can hope it's not it but come on it stands out like a sore thumb it's so clear that it doesn't need any theologian to explain it you see no matter what the evangelists tell you mystery babylon built on the seven hills is not new york It is not London. It is not some financial system. It is not a computer. It's not the world monetary system. There is only one city, my friend, in this world that is built upon seven hills. Check your geography. If it looks like Rome, it is Rome. It is Rome, 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 Rome. Exactly where the Vatican is. Revelation 17 has always, has always was always and always will be talking about the Church of Rome, spiritual Babylon. Let me tell you, if you study and investigate ancient Babylon and all its demonic, all its cultish cultish practices, you would swear you were studying the Roman Catholic Church. Babylon worshipped the mother and the child. They've always, they've always worshipped the mother and the child, just like the Roman Catholic Church. Babylon had a system of priests. The Catholics have a system of priests. Many of the Babylonian practices have been brought into the Roman Catholic Church. What about the little horn in Daniel? The little horn seen in Daniel 7 is the Pope, is the Antichrist, and more than likely is Pope Francis. Why do I say this? because of end time prophecy that is upon us now there just isn't much time left church before the before the king of kings returns the pope is the antichrist and the catholic church is the whore of babylon drunk with the blood of saints where did why is she drunk with the blood of saints because she's killed nearly a hundred million christians over the last 18 years john wycliffe known to Protestants as the Morning Star, that great man of God, claimed that the Pope was the little horn of Daniel 7. Wycliffe said, 
Why is it necessary? He asks the question, why, why is it necessarily to look for another Antichrist when the Pope is clearly the little horn of Daniel 7? Why Cliff's book, The Mirror of Christ, is filled with references to the Pope as the Antichrist? No wonder 30 years after Wycliffe died and they missed the chance to kill him, they dug up his body from the grave, the Catholic priest, and, 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 and smashed it to pieces. That's how sick, how perverted, how deranged these Catholic people are. You really need to read Fox's Book of Martyrs. They dug up his body and decimated it. Fox's Book of Martyrs is full of great men and women who wouldn't bow down and kiss Rome's feet and were hence burned at the stake or buried alive for their disobedience. You see, centuries before Martin Luther turned the Catholic head, uh, Church on its head, great men and women were preaching the Pope is the Antichrist. Martin Luther wasn't the original person that said that the Pope was the Antichrist. Huss of Bohemia, a, a Catholic, said the Pope of Rome was the Antichrist of which the Scriptures had warned. You see, the Antichrist... The anti-Christian system came up through the Catholic Church. Second Thessalonians doesn't speak about the Antichrist system and a government. It talks about the Antichrist and apostasy in the Church, the great falling away. It was Luther, after walking away from the Roman priesthood, that said the Antichrist was the papacy. The Pope is not, my friend, he is not the Vicar of Christ but he is the arch enemy of our Lord and Saviour. It was Sir Isaac Newton, one of the smartest men who ever, who ever lived, said he knew that the Pope was the Antichrist. He studied for 42 years, flat out, and he came up with the answer that the Pope was the Antichrist. Today, sadly, church, the Lutheran church founded by Martin Luther has gone home to Rome. The Methodists, founded by the great John Wesley, have gone home to Rome. In my own church, the Pentecostal church has, has got so many problems, you don't have to tell me. Men like Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Rick Warren, are all at the, at the Pope's feet. They're joining with him, they're holding hands with him, they're hugging him. It's disgusting. And the list goes on. My friends, the Protestant church is going back under the clutches of the Pope. But we shouldn't be surprised because that's what the Bible warned us. How do you stand today? Where are you at? Are you with Rome or are you with Jesus? My friends, every chance in the world says that Pope Francis is the Antichrist. If he is not the Antichrist, he is very, very close to it. And the next one must be. You see, all the prophecies have been fulfilled to bring back the Messiah. Things are ready. Ask yourself, why for the first time ever did the cardinals vote in a Jesuit priest? Because they need the job done and they need it quick. And it's only a murderous, low-life scumbag like a Jesuit that is possibly going to bring this to pass. If you have been tied up with the Catholic Church, I want to break some curses off your life. If you're with the Catholic Church now, I want you to repent and I want you to break them curses off your life. I want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you with the heaviness of the Vatican, of the Catholic system over my life. I repent of selling out to the Catholic Church. I realise that the Pope is the Antichrist and that I need freeing from this curse of a church. Lord, today, make me born again with the blood of Jesus because I realise that no saint can save me, no church can save me, no vicar can save me, that only Jesus Christ can save me and I ask you to help me this day in Jesus' name. Amen.